Welcome to episode number 36 of the Feedy Call. And I gotta first and foremost thank everyone that popped out to uh, the Boneyard Event Services podcast corner. Um, or the pod, as Pops Campbell was calling us and a few other people. Um, super busy weekend at Motorama. Um, was Friday, I was there all day. Um... Got to take some pictures, which I'll try to remember to upload this week. Um, not really top of the priority list for me. Um, as I got work and some other things on the go. And love seeing the racers there. Love having them back. Uh, got to talk with new racers, old racers, ones I've seen. Uh, just a couple of Jomo Media drivers that we're talking to. Handing out Phoenical stickers, Jomo Media stickers, sticking stuff was there, handing out stickers. Uh, the worldwide of motorsports were handed out stickers. Um, we were talking about me hopping into a couple cars, possibly uh, at different tracks: Sobble, Full Throttle, Peterborough, Sunset, Flamborough, Dirt. Um, so I'm going to work on a racing schedule here shortly. So if you're one of those people that was serious about wanting to have a podcaster in your car. Uh, or former retired race car driver um let me know uh if it works out with working schedule and stuff like that and it's not a uh uh conflict of interest or et cetera like that i'll see what we can do see what we can do to work out the the kinks and make sure everything's a-okay copacetic um tonight's guest is cody cook from the full throttle motor speedway uh to be honest, I don't know much about him. We're going to find out more during this interview. Um, I do know he started off in junior late models, then he went to kid stock, which they have up there. And then fun stock is what they call their bone stocks up there. Uh, this year, he is going into mini stocks, and he's going to be running for somebody else in the Ontario Late Model Association. So we're going to talk to him more about the LMA. And see what that's about, see what he thinks of that. Obviously, he's racing the six race schedule. And then uh yeah, we're gonna he's gonna basically fill everyone in on who he is, uh, including myself, who like I said, I haven't got to meet him. He uh we were talking and he said he got to meet Cam, but I wasn't at the podcast corner of that, so I must have been on a food break or something like that. We're just not quite there yet. Um Anyway, uh, sorry if I missed you at Motorama. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Uh, you can still contact me. I still have everyone's stickers packages that uh, Jomo Media drivers threw me in, etc. Um, I will uh, be... I still have one or two hats left. I think everything else is either sold and or spoken for. Um, can't wait for doing this again in 2025. Uh, we'll see how the season goes. Um, but if you're looking to appear on the podcast, don't hesitate to ask me. I am already booking into June, and this is March 12th when I'm recording this. So uh, I'm way busier than I ever expected to be, which is a good thing. Um, it means that you guys are finding this to be a valuable uh, outfit, 
uh, outlook or outfit to represent yourselves, your sponsors, etc. And uh, hopefully I'm doing a good job. Um, so without me rambling on for hours and hours and hours, uh, we're going to bring on Cody here. We're going to have a little conversation and we'll see what uh, Cody's all about and we'll get to know more about him. So without further ado, here's Cody Cook. All right, welcome to this week's of the podcast. We have Cody Cook up from the uh, Barney Full Throttle Motor Speedway. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple minutes. Why don't you uh, give us a little background information about yourself? Yeah, so I started uh, racing in the Junior Late Models when I was eight. Um, raced, uh, did that for a couple of years, then uh, moved to Kid Stock uh, at Varney, and then... Uh, Got a championship in my second year, and then after that, it was COVID, so a couple of years not doing too much, and then uh, then went to Sobel, raced in the combined fours for one full season, made it two nights into the next season, wrecked the car, so that was the end of that car. Uh, we got a new car now, uh, Honda Civic. Going to be running mini stock at full throttle. And then I uh, was asked to drive a late model for the new Ontario late model series at Verney as well. So the uh, Ontario late model association, I believe it's called. Have, so have you been had time to like jump in the late model, uh, have some testing or is it just going to be, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I've never driven a lay model or anything with a V8 on the track. I will tell you from experience, because I jumped in the late model that I bought sight unseen. I literally bought it, put it on the trailer, put tires on it, and took it out to race. Start slower, and then work your way up to speed. Yeah. It is way better to spin because you went too slow and throttled up too much than it is to have not enough brakes when you enter the corner. <laughs> Yeah, I bet. Yeah, everything happens so much faster in the late model as well. So, yeah, which new car are you more excited to drive, the late model or the new Honda Civic? Um, good question. Um, I'm I'm always wanted to try a late model, so I'm definitely happy for the opportunity to do it. So, really looking forward to that. Mini stock, um. I'm also very excited for, if you can believe it, because um, I've always wanted to go and travel to other tracks. So this year we're going to, there's only two mini stock races at Sobel this year. We're going to go to both. Uh, we're going to make it to Sunset a couple times in Flamborough, and then hopefully up to Peterborough for Autumn Colors in the fall. Yeah, if you're coming down to Peterborough for Autumn Colors, make sure you pack warm clothes cold clothes everything because yeah. last last year we had every season throughout the weekend it snowed one day it was like sunny and like 25 degrees the next day and i honestly wish i had my mini stock still that weekend i know i drove a lot of cars that weekend if you were paying attention but it was, that was the mini stock was the most fun car to drive this year because i just yeah. i didn't care what happened to it kind of thing so it was a car I got on trade for selling another car. So it was one of those things like if it wrecked, it wrecked. If it didn't, it didn't. And at the same time, it was a lot cheaper to fix a Dodge Neon than it is like the super stock or the modified. Yeah, definitely. So who are you driving the late model for? Or are you allowed to say? Yeah, it's so it's actually uh, the people that created the Ontario Late Model Association, Mike and Katie. Uh, it's their car. Um there's only there's only going to be six nights of Varney this year with it. Uh, we'll see how it goes. See if we can kind of do okay. Um, got a lot of learning to do, so see how it goes. Yeah, it's it's a big step learning learning up a car like that, especially because, like you say, you don't have any rear wheel drive experience. Um, is there? People at uh, Full Throttle Motor Speedway or Varney, whichever it's called, depending on the day or who you talk to, if you talk to veterans or et cetera like that, is there anyone that you're looking to maybe bounce ideas off of or get advice from to as you jump into that late model? 
Yeah, I mean, like pretty much everyone that's going to be racing in the class, like I'm really, I think I'm really the only one that's never raced something like this. So definitely try to talk to everyone that's going to be there and find out as much as I can before racing starts. I think, Maybe. um, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead, but you're the guest. Um, yeah, I think, uh, just pretty much everyone there is great people to talk to. They're, they all race for quite a while longer than I have and know way more than I do. So at, uh, Full Throttle Motor Speedway, who are some of the people that you've maybe gotten tips or advice from uh maybe like from junior late models to kid stocks to the fun stock divisions like up in the combined fours at Sobel yeah uh Tim Tolton from Varney the you had him on last week I think um um yeah Tim... bunch of the guys at Sobel yeah. um and the Combined fours, everyone there has been pretty good. So I did have Tim on last week. He he's a hell of a nice guy. A lot of experience behind mm -hmm. uh behind those hands and feet that power the. He's definitely someone that could uh give you advice on how to wheel a late model around full throttle, as he's probably done it more mm -hmm. times sleeping than he ha we have awake. Um, this Ontario Late Model Association. Uh, can you maybe give us a little background information? Because I've seen a few posts here and there, but down this way, it's kind of not really that big, and I didn't see anything about it at Motorama. So maybe yeah. you can give us a little background information that uh, maybe other late model drivers might might need to know. Yeah, so it's going to be six nights of Barney, as I said. Um, basically, the plan and the goal behind it is to get all the old late models that they won't be able to run and say the APC because they're too old just to get them out to be able to race something. Um, oh, if, even if it's only for a few nights a year, just to basically just get old cars out. And, so they're not sitting to, yeah, yeah to, to try to keep, um, keep things running. We don't want to see cars sitting, you know, yeah, maybe I'll have to see if I can steal a car and head up there and participate in a race. But yeah. uh, I don't know if anyone's crazy enough to let me borrow a late model. <laughs> I yeah. say that, but Gary Hanna let me drive his late model at Autumn Cars after not driving a late model since 2019. And I only put it through the grass once. Um, it was kind of weird. So I was driving, like I said, I haven't driven since 2019. No, sorry, 2021. That's false information. Goddamn years flying by. Um, what happened was I was coming out of three and four, and all of a sudden I just throttled up a little too much, and she went down the grass. I'm like, hopefully nobody's watching. And then watch it. I watched back later on the G-Force camera. I'm like, everybody was watching. <laughs> so, um, is there any plans for like uh, event coverage on the Ontario Late Model Association? Like G-Force maybe popping up, or I think I seen something about TV coming out and doing some interviews and stuff like that yeah i think um i think whiteman's uh, and east link are going to come and film i think a couple weeks before racing starts they're gonna come and we're gonna have a kind of a late model only practice i guess and they're gonna interview a couple people for for the tv and have some footage and then I think the plan is uh, to put advertisements on every week for all the races and then uh, maybe see if they pop out for a couple races and film the whole event. So let's talk a little bit more about you instead of just the late models and stuff like that. So what are some of the accomplishments that you've had in your uh, basically young racing career that you've started? Yeah, I've got... Uh, I won a championship in the junior late models and then one in kid stock. Um, rookie of the year, kid stock, uh, my first year. Um, and uh, I would say I got a heat win at Sobel with a bunch of 
pretty fast guys in the heat, so pretty happy about that. Yeah. I said, I, I won a bunch of heat races this year, and some of those heats that I had to deal with were harder than racing in some of the features I've ever run in. Like, you can, yeah. you catch a, a heat race when you get, like, all the top fives and points. It's like, you're driving your butt off and hoping for the best. And it's like, so I, I always like the analogy of the, if you remember the Johnny Depp meme from Pirates of the Caribbean, it's like me starting on the poles, like Johnny Depp running down the beach with all the cannibals behind him. So true. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, a question I like to ask, like, younger uh, guests like yourself, where do you see yourself progressing? Obviously, like I said, you're getting a late model. Do you want to, like, get up to late model and stay late model? Do you want to possibly, like, go on a tour? Do you want to get a modified? Like, where do you see yourself getting to? I'd love to stay in the late model. I'm not sure if that will happen. We'll see how the year goes. Um, I'd love to stay in Eventually, if we can uh, travel around doing it, and that would be that'd be pretty cool, I think. So, which track, other than the two you've already run with uh, Full Throttle and Sobble, are you looking forward to the most? Um, I think Sunset is going to be pretty cool. And then, of course, Peterborough for Autumn Colors. I think uh, it's going to be... Pretty cool to race um, a lot of people. Yeah, and I said if you come down for like the invitationals, like Velocity or Frostfest or Golden Colors, you're racing against some of the best in Ontario and kind of proving what mm -hmm. your track has to offer as like you're one of the participants. So and it's one of those things that it, I find it's I can have a car that's super good at Peterborough. I'll take it down to Flambro and it's a lap, like I've been a lap car after running fifth at Autumn Colors. It's like it's mind blowing how much work it is to change cars between tracks and tracks, even though they're stock and we're not allowed to change things. But uh, is there anyone that you thought about talking to, but like uh, that maybe you can talk to, but setting the car up for sunset before you go down or flambro or et cetera? Um, I don't really know too many people from there, so I haven't really talked to anybody yet. Um, maybe. Uh, I don't know if anyone out there knows, send me a message if they're willing to help. Um, I will tell you with Hondas, Ryan Babin is the guy down here that is probably one of the fastest in Hondas. Uh, if you can get Andy Camrath to give you a hand, he definitely knows those cars. He's uh, been around them once or twice. <laughs> um, uh, Sunset, I think you had like a Matt Boyce, uh was pretty good in Honda. Warren Paxson, Johnny Perzinski. Which I'm pretty sure you've seen up there at Sobble uh, once or yeah. twice. Um, guys like that. And I think there's another one that's at, uh, at Flambro and stuff like that. But you can probably talk to them about what they do. Is and I always found, like, as a, a younger generation driver like yourself, if you're willing to, without better expression, shut up and listen, a lot more drivers are willing to help. Then if you go up there and be like, oh, I don't want to do this because the car does this. But if you just kind of take a little piece of advice here and a little piece of advice there and apply it to your own practice to see what works for you, it's usually better in the long run. I don't know if you kind of agree with that or I'm sometimes yeah. I'm sometimes on an island the way I think. <laughs> yeah, it's like just take take a little bit of every a little bit of something from everyone, try to piece the puzzle together. So, this new mini stock you got, it's what, an 88 Civic hatch? Uh, 90. I was close. close. I was close. So, uh, do you have any history on where that car's come from? or? Um, we got it uh, from Shelby Goodwin, uh, who raced at Sauble. And uh, it was Matt McDonald's car before that. Uh, I think it came from Sunset before that think so we'll have to take a look in and see if that's like an old warren paxton car or maybe even an old camrath car because yeah those i want to say mid 2010 ish cars there's a bunch of them that are if you can find them and they're old they're, i think some of them still hold the track record of those camrath cars and paxton cars but uh what what's the workload kind of having to been different between your uh 
fun stock and then getting ready for mini stock this year? Um, well, I mean, pretty much everything. Um, I've had to, we swapped uh, the Earl Cage out of the old car um, into this one, just upgrade it a bit and um, clean everything up nice and piecing things together. Have you got a good stockpile on Falcon Azinas yet? Or are you, or are you going to try to go off the beaten path and find like another sticky tire and hope it works or yeah we have uh we have some for this year and then probably end up getting some more for some so, spares are you going to run the 615 falcon azina or the 660s um i'm not sure what's on it actually right now so the easiest way to tell is the 615s will have like one squiggly line down the center of it and like the rest will be straight and then the uh, 660s are almost like two straight lines and just edges kicking off it. And those 660s, I find, are a little bit faster. Like I like I said, I put two on the Neon this year. But the problem is after one or two heat cycles, they go right down to where a 615 is. It's, it's a weird way that they build those tires, but like they're so fast the first time you put them on the car. Like it's three tenths for right side tires at Peterborough. I don't know what it'd be like up there, depending on gear ratio and et cetera, like that. Like I've only raced Varney uh, one time, so and I've never raced Sobel. Uh, I'm hearing this is changing, and I'm racing Sobel one time this year. But uh, next week's guest will kind of confirm or deny that. Um, yeah. So that way, I'm not giving too much away. Um, so, who are some of the people that you've liked racing so far in your career? Like as you moved up class, like are there people that like you've raced side by side with most of the time. It's like every week you're battling hard or is there like all of a sudden you got a little bit better. And it's like, Hey, I'm racing with this guy now. It's like, or, or girl, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, all the guys and kids talk uh, a couple years ago, um, Brian Wilson, Jr. Um, uh, Thomas Winch, uh, he's in the heart rod now. Uh, both of them are, I guess. Um, uh, Jeremy Curtis, years in the late model at Grand Bend. All of them, they're great to run with at uh, full throttle back in the day. Um, we're all pretty close all the time, I think. Uh, managed to get away from them a couple times. Um, at Sobel, um, just uh, Steve Hurd, um, uh, Wade Thorne was there. He was way faster than me, though. Um, <laughs> Wade is faster than a lot of us. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can make him run around a track, and I could drive, and he'd still somehow beat me. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I can't think of names right now. Um, <laughs> I got you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> so um is there like a somebody like on your hit list like guys you'd like to race against and not necessarily people like almost like you like for me like i have a few people on my list still like i have a john baker jr i want to race or like a kelly balson like, again i've already crossed like guys like jr fitzpatrick and dj kennington and stuff off the list but is there like guys that you'd like to race against maybe and like what series would you like to race against them in yeah, I mean, that with the late model, it's going to be, I mean, like all these people that I've watched since I was little, I will be racing with uh, most of them and then having the opportunity if some of them decide to come out. Uh, I think uh, I seen Billy Zarda was thinking about coming to a couple in the late model. Um, that'd be very cool to race with him. Um uh, pretty much anyone that drives a late model. So I, I've raced with Billy Zardo and I can tell you, he is one of those things that he's very calm, very methodical when he's behind the wheel. And it's, it's weird. Cause I've raced with both Zardo brothers. They're both great drivers in their own, their own aspect. Billy is the slow, methodical, like pick your poison, like at the spot where Lane is. I am going to get everything I can as I can get it, and let's see where I am at the end of the race. 
And it's, I don't understand how those two brothers went like exactly the same way, but they'll end up finishing almost exactly together. Like you'll see Lane, he'll take off and he'll back off a couple spots as he burns some stuff up. He's slowly been getting better as um, like the uh, Quick Quick series and stuff has been teaching him to save his stuff with the uh, 36 best of the car. And then you'll see Billy starting to be a little more aggressive. So like they're starting to even more equal out. So maybe you'll get a day where you get to race Lane and Billy in the late models at the same time. Because I can tell you right now, it, it is really hard to race them because it's it's good, hard, clean racing. And they will give you 150% every single lap. So you'll be in for a challenge if, if you get the Zardos up there. Yeah, I think that'd be cool to race with both of them. Um yeah, for mini stock, I mean, all the guys at Sunset pretty much in Peterborough. Um, I'll be cool. Pretty much anyone that races, I want to race against. Yeah, you're like me. It's like if you're if you're driving a car, I want I want to be like, all right. You never know who's gonna like blow up into somebody at the end of the, end of the day either. Like, you have somebody like uh, a couple years ago. I started racing super stocks again, and I uh, went down to Flamborough. I started racing Chase Pinsonell. And now he's down running with late models with uh, Carson Hosovar. I hope I said that name right because I'm really bad with names. But uh, yeah, so he's starting to work his way up the ladder. He's got good opportunity possible. That's going up or down, like you know what I mean, depending on how he does. Um, there's other people. It's like I've got a race with Danny Benedicts in mini stocks and stuff like that, and now they're winning APC races and stuff like that. So it, it for me, it's one of those cool things to be like, hey, I got a race with that person before they before they were somebody or at the same time it's like mm-hmm. i got to race jr fitzpatrick in his prime like he lapped me in warm-up laps before we took the green like we were just putting heat in the tires and then there goes jr i'm like damn <laughs> so yeah. But yeah my biggest advice to you in the late model is like i said take it slow like don't try to overdrive it right away tim will tell you the same thing uh work your way into the speed bounce ideas off of like everybody but all the drivers give them the utmost respect like if somebody comes up to you and tells you like hey you're doing this a little bit wrong a little this a little bit wrong it's the the mental side of mini stock and late model like the racing aspect of it so like mini stock if you're not like at the b pillar you're not there where sometimes the late model if you have a spotter it's like if you're at the back quarter panel you're you're that guy's there like it's been the hardest thing for me to adapt to between car to car to car and like what the accepted standard almost is. So it it could be like, you have to sit there and talk be like, Hey, if we're racing like this, what's, what's my like position supposed to be? Like, if you're going around me, am I supposed to be here, here? Like, you know what I mean? Like, as you start racing and getting more competitive, because I'm not saying you're not going to be competitive right off the bat, but if JR Fitzpatrick shows up for your first late model race, I'm not betting against JR. <laughs> like you know what I mean yeah, but I wouldn't I, there's not a sane person in Ontario that bet against JR in a late model race but uh, yeah. this is what I'm saying if you can like bounce ideas be like hey I'm learning in this and I, I'd like to know and that's honestly one of the persons that helped me a lot was oddly enough it was Dan Archibald so he j- was in Peterborough Super Stocks or Thunder Cars we called him back then and when he, we were racing together I'd actually move over and let him go because he caught me so fast. And that sucking behind him, follow, like, learn the line, the fast, all that stuff. And then afterwards, we'd start talking more and more. And it was like, hey, why do you do this? And it's like, he'd explain it. And then he'd be like, well, why are you doing this? And I'd explain myself. So you can have that conversation back and forth. Where I find some people kind of push it a little too much and be a little over aggressive and maybe lose those common courtesies that. But yeah, that's my piece of advice before I ramble on like a squirrel. So uh, we just had Motorama this weekend. Yeah. So what what was your favorite part about Motorama? Uh, I got to meet lots of people that I've uh, seen online for a while. Um, I did an interview with Cam from Stickers and Scuffs. That was pretty cool. Did you didn't come say hi to me? I couldn't find you. I was in the same booth! <laughs> I know. You weren't there when I was there. I might have been touring or something. Uh, There was a few 
shenanigans some of us podcasters got up to. Um, I don't know if you've seen that we had a slot car race, and then after our slot car race, we had a tire change challenge, which I also mm-hmm. won. Um, but I kind of cheated because I'm a mechanic and I race cars where all these guys I don't think have the experience. Um, yeah. D- did you get to try any of these? these things there or did you like race them on the slot cars do the mechanic challenge no i didn't i didn't get up to any of that um i would have liked to um all the lines were too long when i was there oh so you must have been there saturday morning i was there saturday i i was there friday too with school um but uh it was pretty busy still at the time yeah, that's not near as busy as Saturday though. Yes, yeah, the the Friday during the school hours it was kind of busy until I guess lunchtime is when everyone started windling back and out and going to school again. And then there was a weird lull between like three to four o'clock before people got off work and then it picked back up again Friday night. So I went and took a couple pictures of cars and stuff like that. I talked to Tim and with that Studa Baker. Uh, got told I'm driving cars this year by other people. Well, I have to make a schedule now. Um. Saturday was absolutely nuts. Like, I got there at, like, pulling, trying to pull in the driveway at, like, 10 o'clock because I was running late because I had a chiropractor appointment. It took me an hour to get into the parking lot. It was yeah. ridiculous. Um. So what was some of your favorite cars there? That's kind of where this is leading. Sorry, I, I start ranting and ADHD at its best. <laughs> yeah, um... Uh, I liked uh, their Grass Pros, the uh, Connors um, Chevelle there, the black one out front. That was a pretty nice looking car. The burgundy um, one out front? Uh, the, the black one, one was in the, the front hall. Yeah. Yeah, like right before you walked into their racing area. Oh, okay, so yeah. So there's the burgundy one that was outside where the ticket yeah. booth was. That was also their car, I think. And then there's a black yeah. one by the eBay's booth. So I'm like, wait a minute, which one is he talking about here? Yeah, um, both of them. Sorry, I scroll moment here. Um, oh, that's why I scroll moment because this thing popped up on the screen. My bad. Um, for I just got the little message saying we're going to start running down on time here. So I'm going to give you a few moments to thank all your sponsors. You can message where people can find you on social media, where we can buy like some uh, cook t-shirts like like you're wearing and stuff like that right now. Yeah. And uh, maybe you can give us a little bit of your schedule. Yeah. Um, all my sponsors, uh, we got a few new ones this year. Um, we got Ideal Fire Suppression Systems, uh, McCullough Septic, uh, Lake Range Service Center, uh, Work Service Center new for this year. Um, we got the Travel Lodge and Sunrise Cafe in Port Elgin, and uh, all my family, my biggest supporters. Um, t-shirts. Uh, we don't have any for sale right now. We're gonna hopefully get some new ones made up, and maybe have some at the track for the summer. Maybe some hats too. Yeah, hats um, are always a big seller. As you can see, I'm wearing the brand yeah. new Feeny Call hats that I just released this weekend. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, for uh, schedule, um, full time, late model, uh, all six nights of Barney and all the mini stock nights of Barney. Two um, mini stock nights at Sobel and two at Sunset. One at Flamborough, and then, of course, Autumn Colors at Peterborough. And then where can uh, fans find you on your social medias? Uh, Facebook, just under my name, Cody Cook. Uh, Instagram, same thing. And uh, TikTok under Cook Motorsports. All right, I'm going to have to follow you on there because I don't think I follow you yet on TikTok. Um, And I spend way too much time watching racing things on there. Um, also, if you pay attention to Joe Mo Media on TikTok, you'll find some of my shenanigans on there from inside the race car. I don't know what it is. I seem to like uh, to entertain when he puts cameras in my car's GoPros. Um, but that's just me. I'm full of shenanigans. 
It, it it looks like you're you might be full of shenanigans too. You're just being shy right now. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Hey, shenanigans are fun as long as they are legal and can't get you in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna thank you for joining me here tonight, Cody. It was great having yeah. you on, and uh, hopefully, I can get up there to watch you race at least once this year. Yeah, that'd be good. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Uh, have yourselves a great week, and we'll see you. I think in. It starts, what, April, end of April up there? Uh, for uh, 4th of May, it's the first well, one. I was close. close. <laughs> my schedule stole my car. I, ha I should have brought it down and paid attention. But anyway, we'll see you soon, and uh, thank you for joining me. Yeah, thanks.